I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you a question from my subscriber. Let me thank Ellen for sharing such a beautiful question. And thanks to all my subscribers for making this YouTube channel an excellent site for all. Now the question here is that we are given a function and we need to sketch reciprocal of that function and understand characteristics of that reciprocal function. With the help of this question, I'll teach you all what you need to learn about sketching the function, its reciprocal, and understanding their characteristics. Let's begin by writing the function itself. Function is a parabola given in vertex form. x minus 1 whole square minus 4, right? So we know here that the vertex for the function is 1 minus 4. Now from here, we can sketch the function. We also know that the steps are 1, 3, 5, 7. So for any parabola, these are two critical things which we need to understand. Steps are 1, 3, 5, 7 and so on. Since A is 1, we don't have to multiply by any stretch factor. So with this information, let's sketch the parabola first and then we will see how to sketch its reciprocal. Let me make a very rough sketch. So let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4 for us on the left, right side and on the left side minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now the vertex is at minus 4, the y value. Let's say 1, 2, 3, 4. That's minus 4 for us. So 1 minus 4 gives us the vertex for the parabola. Steps are 1, 3, 5, 7. If I move one unit left, then I have to go one unit. And the second will take me three down. So 1, 2, 3, that becomes the x-intercept. From the symmetry, we can get the other points also, right? One unit right, one step, and the next intercept. So these are good enough points for us to sketch the parabola. So let's sketch the parabola from here. It should be a smooth curve. So whenever you sketch a parabola, try not to make a corner at this side and also don't make it like a cylinder. Okay, so it has to go towards infinity. Now that is the sketch of the function itself. So we have done the first part. Now we need to use the graph to sketch reciprocal of the function. Let's always begin with the x intercepts since what is reciprocal let me write down reciprocal of the function itself here first reciprocal is 1 over f of x correct that means it is 1 over x minus 1 whole square minus 4 now wherever this function has a 0 we'll get 1 over 0 and 1 over 0 is not defined so these two points are not defined for the reciprocal function right so at these two points, in this case, we'll have vertical asymptotes. So let me draw vertical asymptotes here. So always begin with vertical asymptotes. That's, I think, the best way to sketch reciprocal of a function from the given function. The second point which I always look for is where is y value 1? Let's say y value 1 is here, right? So this plus 1 gives me these points which I call invariant points. So y is 1 here, right? So these are my invariant point. Since 1 over 1 is 1, right? So it is common for both. Minus 1 over 1 is also minus 1. So minus 1 and 1 gives us the invariant point. So these are the critical points to look into. So what we will do here is, since 1 over 1 is 1, we can further sketch the function from this point itself. As the value of the function goes beyond 1, let's say it becomes 2, then the value of the reciprocal will be 1 over 2, right? So, and if it goes to, let us say 8, it will be 1 over 8, right? Or 1 over 10, like that it moves on. So what I'm trying to say is, it is approaching lower and lower value as the value of the function increases. But if the value of the function is becoming Closer to zero, the reciprocal is positive, means positive, it is closer to infinity, the reciprocal, right? So, so that's like this. 
you should not be touching the vertical asymptote, but you are just going close enough to the vertical. You are approaching that line, right? Remember one thing, that reciprocal of positive is positive, right? So we'll have a positive graph on this part of the quadrant also. So what we see here is that our zeros have divided the quadrants into three parts. So that's the first, second and third. In first and third part, the reciprocal is going to be positive with invariant at one, right? And then from here, we can draw this reciprocal part. Is it okay? As far as the center part is concerned, the function is negative, so reciprocal will be negative. Now, the function has a minimum value of 4, correct? So what is 1 over 4? I mean, the reciprocal of, I mean, minus 4. So what is the reciprocal of this minus 4? It is minus 1 over 4. Let's say that is this point. Therefore, the reciprocal will have that as our local maximum, right? So we can use that local maximum and then go through ones. So these are our ones, right? So that is the second point, correct? So at, at one, we have this minus four. So we have to come down from here. And it is going to approach the vertical asymptote, but from, as I've shown, negative side, right? Towards negative infinity. So what we get here is the maximum translates I mean, the minimum of the function translates to local maximum of the reciprocal function, which will be at 1, and let me write down here, okay, 1 minus 1 over 4. So that becomes our local maximum, correct? So that is the graph of our reciprocal function. I hope you understand and appreciate the steps. So to sketch the graph, what we did really was that we looked into a couple of points. Those points were zeros gave rise to the vertical asymptotes, right? This is the first part. Zeros of the function were vertical asymptotes. And then we looked into invariant points. So wherever f of x is equals to plus and minus 1, these are the common points. And then we also saw that if f of x is positive, then our reciprocal is also positive, right? And if f of x is negative, reciprocal is negative. Is that okay? That's. And we saw that the local minimum becomes local maximum in reciprocal. Correct? Minimum of, of course, function correct so so that is what is going to help us to understand how to translate from the function to reciprocal also increasing interval these are the increasing interval became decreasing interval so increasing intervals changed into decreasing intervals For the reciprocal, right? So these are a few things which you observe here. Now let's get back to the last stage, which is then state the characteristics of this reciprocal function, correct? So I hope you understand all the characteristics which helped us to sketch the reciprocal function. And now we will get to the characteristics of the reciprocal itself. So Amongst those characteristics, first, of course, is domain and range. So we are now talking about reciprocal function characteristics, correct? So the domain here is all real numbers, but not including the vertical asymptote points, which is for us, in this case, as we saw, these are at 3 and minus 1. These are zeros of the function, right? So these are zeros of the function, right? You could have calculated zeros also from here. Let me show you how to do that part. Okay, sorry for just getting zeros. That means zero equals to, I saw some students struggling to figure out. So zero equals to this, bring down four here. So get four equals to x minus one whole square. Then you do square root. So whenever you do square root, you get plus minus, right? Square root of four 
equals to x minus 1, right? And, uh, okay, let's go to this part. So we can get from here x equals to square root of plus minus 4 is plus minus 2. So bring 1 to this side, so 1 plus minus 2. So that gives us two values. 1 is 1 plus 2 and the other one is 1 minus 2 minus 1. Do you see that? So those are the zeros for us, okay? Well, we got it graphically and therefore we didn't have to calculate, but at times you may have to calculate. So these zeros become vertical asymptote and these are restrictions. Now range. Range is y of course belongs to real numbers, but as you can see, y is never zero, right? So y is greater than zero and y is less than the local maximum value here. So y is less than but equal to minus 1 over 4. At times I've seen students missing on this equal to sign, right? So Ellen, I'll request you to go through this very carefully. There are a lot of places where errors can be made, okay? So that becomes the range for our function. And then we can write down increasing interval. So increasing interval for our function is, this orange is our function reciprocal. It is increasing from minus infinity to the first asymptote, which is at minus 1. And then from minus 1 to the maximum value, which is at plus 1, right? And thereafter it is decreasing, right? So let me continue here and say decreasing interval. Okay, in short, it is decreasing after 1 to the asymptote. So 1, 2, 3, never include asymptote. And then from 3 to infinity, it is decreasing. And we can also say when is R of x is positive. Positive means greater than 0, for right? So it is positive in minus infinity to minus 1, the first part, and in the third part from 3 to positive infinity. And R of x is negative, negative in between, that is from minus 1 to 3. Do you see that? There it is decreasing. And we also found that it has the vertical asymptote which we have already mentioned, but no harm in saying vertical asymptotes are at x equals to minus 1 and x equals to 3 and we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals to 0. Now this horizontal asymptote can also be described under end behavior. Do you understand? End behavior is when x approaches positive infinity or when x approaches minus infinity, y approaches zeros, right? So, so that is also the end behavior, correct? So these are some characteristics which I like to highlight uh, in this video. Ellen, I think you understand all this. Share me, with me your comments and remarks. Thank you and keep sharing. All the best to all of you.